the signal yet? There we go. Good morning again. Good morning. Well, it is an honor to be up here and be able to kind of lead you guys in worship in this way, too. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about prophets. Now, prophets in our Bible are uh, pretty important people. Uh, they were sent by God and are still kind of relevant to us. Well, they're definitely relevant to us today because their job was to kind of tell us about the world we were living in and how it might be affected differently if we listen to the message of God because people generally when prophets were sent were kind of distant from God. They had, they had gone away from that. And we have four major prophets um, and 12 minor prophets in our Bible that you can read about. And lots of names you've probably heard before, including the one that was just read. Um, what are the prophets... Um, what were they from? How were they made up? It's kind of interesting history stuff. Um, not history, but why? It's not that much history. Um, you'd think that if you're going to be a prophet, if you're going to be the mouthpiece of God, like a literal mouthpiece of God, like you've been sent to walk into people's lives and share God's message, that you would need to be something pretty important. And the reality is, yeah, there were a few that were actually of a priestly lineage, like their dad was a super important priest guy in the temple, and his grandfather was, and their great-grandfather, and all that stuff. Um, but some of them were shepherds, and there was a musician, and there were a variety of other just random jobs, as though God just went, you know what, you're the person that's going to talk for me. And people were like, what? And they had to go actually explain things. And, and the part of their job that was tricky was, most of the time prophets were sent because of this cycle that we get into. And why I think prophets are still important today, and why it's pretty cool to still be able to preach about them and hear about them, is because... One of the things I've noticed in the Bible is that there's just this recurring story over and over and over and over again, which is we do stupid things, and then God saves us. And then we're like, oh, God, thanks so much. And then like 15 minutes later, we forget God. And then we're all like, yeah, thanks us so much because we're sweet. And then after that, God sends prophets to tell us about how unsweet we actually are and how if we don't get back to where we're supposed to be, bad things are going to happen. And then we just keep looping. And I find comfort in that. I don't know if you find any comfort in that, but it just lets me know that I'm not the only person that keeps messing up over and over again, and that God somehow has had patience to make it all the way to here, and even through there sent his son Jesus to die for us. Now the people, you know, at Isaiah's time, Isaiah's a major prophet, he's a pretty big deal. He was preaching around 700 B.C. And in 700 B.C., the time when Isaiah was preaching in Israel, in the Middle East, it was still turmoil. Like when we hear the Middle East now, it's almost considered, it's not politically correct, we call it Southeast Asia in schools now, because Middle East has such a negative terminology to it now, it feels negative when you hear it, because there's so many things that have gone on turmoil-wise there, that even then, it was all messed up. But, Israel was in this place where they had kind of just gotten themselves out of a mess, and they're living their life, and around them are places like Assyria, who were the scariest people on the planet at the time. But they were far enough away yet that you didn't have to worry about them unless you really, really wanted to. And Egypt is to the south. And they were a big deal, but not the same big deal they were in Moses' time. They kind of lost some of their power. Now, they were trying to get some of them back, but they're far enough away that we don't have to worry about that if we don't want to. So, at this point, Israel was fine. Didn't have anything major to worry about. The borders were pretty safe. Their leadership was fine. It was kind of stable for the first time in a while. And Isaiah was sent to them. Now, this word fine is one that I'm kind of focusing on a little bit today. Um, there is a, a lady um, who I looked up, and her name is Mel Robbins. And Mel Robbins um, was actually a TV host. She's been called into CNN to talk. She has a, she's a life coach as part of her job. I'm not exactly sure what a life coach is, but it sounds like a cool job. Um, and she helps people out with different things. And she's got some articles and some videos and things. And in an article she read, she actually called fine a four-letter word that is destroying our, our society. <coughs> that fine is this bad thing because in our society... Fine is just whatever it is. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? Fine. The reality is you may actually be falling apart, but you don't care for anybody else to know about that because I don't feel like telling you about my life. And that's great because when I asked you how you were, I didn't care. I don't have time to hear that you were not good. So just go ahead and be fine, and I'll be fine also, and we can be fine somewhere together. And she says that people aren't just using it to get away from social interaction, just say everything's fine. We're also using it as a crutch. We're using fine to kind of help us not achieve. She actually says that people don't get what they want in this world because of fine. Well, I don't know about that. She's like, she starts explaining, she just says, we get into these places in our life where there's these things we want, these things we yearn for, and, and, and we've convinced ourselves that we're fine without that. I'm fine here. I don't need that. And as long as we tell ourselves that we're fine, we're fine then we 
don't ever try to get those things because you don't need them because fine's fine. Are you following me on this? It's kind of scary, isn't it, that such a simple little word can be so destructive to us getting ahead of things. So, with that knowledge, I look back at the scripture that we read in Isaiah, and Isaiah was sent to a place that was just fine to let them know how unfine they actually were, and nobody wanted to hear it. He was sent by God to say, look, you guys didn't get any of this stuff. God did it. You forgot. And they're like, no, we're pretty sure we did it. Now, I always like to remind people, too, if you ever open the Bible, the pages are super duper thin. Okay? They're super duper thin because it's like a zillion years worth of stuff in there. You might flip one page in the Bible and jump like 200 years. And I'm not kidding. That happens. Like, there's a lot of information there. The United States, in case you didn't know this, has barely been here for 200 years. It's just a little over 200 years old. And we think we're like the deal. Like, Roman Empire was around for a long time. Egypt was around for several thousand years, actually. Like, other people have done it longer than we have. So there's possibility that this time that they've been fine has actually been quite a while. It may have been 100 years or more that they've been fine. So they've forgotten that God's done some nice things for them. And they're pretty sure they did the good things. And they're living a normal life. And here's this guy that's trying to tell them, you guys are in darkness. And they're like, what in darkness? Look, I got this nice house with the windows. And I have my own chariot. And we have plenty of grain to make things out of. I'm doing just fine. And they've missed out on this relationship with God. And he's trying to tell them, and he says, not only are you not fine, because you're not really in relationship with your God, but if you don't get yourselves in check, bad things are coming. And they know what bad things he's talking about, but they don't want to hear that because those are far away over here. And they're not here yet. We're fine here. And so they ignore it because they can't see it with him talking about it. Now, why do you bring all this stuff up? The reason I bring all this stuff up is if you're one of those people who likes to figure out the movie before it's over with, you may have already gotten here. I think we're fine, aren't we, in America? We're pretty awesome. We've done all this by ourselves. And as a history guy, just to give you the precursor on this one, if we fought the American Revolution 100,000 more times, we would never win it. Not once. It was a complete fluke on so many levels that we won the American Revolution. Like, there, there's like a million of those. Well, if that hadn't happened, if, if any one of those hadn't happened, we would and somehow we're a country, but we did that on our own. God had nothing to do with any of that stuff. And we think we're so awesome sometimes. And we cover that with fine because we live lives where some of us are very fine. We have nice houses and we have cars and we have our bills paid and, and we have a job that we're pretty happy with and we're fine. Why would I want something more? I don't need God in this. I've seen Christians. They're annoying. <laughs> they don't seem any happier than I am. I don't have time for your version of fine for, or better. I'm fine here. I don't want that. I don't need that in my life. There's other people who aren't doing well, and they're saying, I don't want that in my life. I, my life already sucks as it is, and you're going to try to stick that in my life? I don't want any of that stuff. And I think we're drowning in fine. Because some of us are really hurting. You see, some of us need somebody to be like, how are you? And for us to go fine and go, I don't think you are. How are you really? And for us to just go, you know, I'm horrible. My life is a disaster. My wife left me. I, I lost my job. I, I feel like a terrible parent because I don't seem to know what I'm doing with my kids. My, my boss is, is evil. My employees are entitled and don't do any work ever. I had horrible headaches. The only person in my life that understood me died. All those things. Sometimes I just want to go home and lay down and put my head in a pillow and scream. But I'm fine because you have to be fine, don't you? I think what we're hearing from this prophet is that that's the darkness that the people were living in. We don't need to just be fine. That that's what's cool about the church. Is the church is a place for people that don't have to be fine. This is a place for people who are hurting. And for people who need to somebody to talk to. And want to actually know that there are other people that feel the way they feel. And I think that's part of what we're trying to hear in this prophet, that, that even though you would say, I'm not in the dark, look at me, I got things going good. I just went on vacation last week. There's something else missing, and we all know it. But the problem is, I can stand up here and tell you that. And I've experienced it. But that doesn't mean you get it. And Tom can tell you that, and Diane, and Pastor Dan used to tell us that. Before that, Henry and Marlon. All kinds of people who know and have lived that can tell you that, but you're not going to get it. 
So I want to kind of point that out to you in a way that maybe will stick with you. You've been wondering about this, I hope. It's been bothering me the entire time you've been here. <laughs> to those of you who were born after 1989, this, my friends, is a television. <laughs> I dug this out of the trash myself last summer. And it's been waiting for today. My grandma had one just like this. And she was the cool one that had cool stuff up where I lived. I can still remember having a black and white TV myself, that's what I had for my room, which was cool because I had a TV in my room. And it was the kind of, the brand name was Philco, it was the kind when you were a little kid that actually hurt your hand and clipped the knob, you know what I'm talking about? And then I, I want to say it even had that little thing where you could like help tune in in the middle of the knob, if anybody remembers that, to kind of make the channel come in a little better. And uh, that would rip up your fingers a little bit too. And my grandma got this. This is huge, look at this thing. It's the biggest TV ever. And it's color, and it's awesome, and I can go over to grandma's and watch basketball with her on it. Mind blower. I mean, look at the size of that thing. It's like a 30 something inch screen. There's nothing that big. It's like almost showing off grandma with this thing. And I can still remember it, it still makes me smile. I smile a little bit on the inside when I think about it because the Chicago Bulls were her special team. That's what she called them, not her favorite team, her special team. And so I got to watch that, and I remember thinking how amazing the picture was on this TV. And to tell whatever age I was, seven-year-old, eight-year-old Paul, that there would be something better than grandma's wooden TV, you're out of your mind. That is the best thing that there will ever be. The quality and clarity of this picture is amazing. But then, the VCR came out. Wait a minute. I can put a thing in top of here, and I can record TV and play it back whenever I want? No, that's not possible. There could never be any better than VCR, right? How could you fix that? I can watch somebody can give me a movie from the movie theater and I can put it in here and watch it on grandma's TV at 32 inches in color. There could be nothing better. Could there? But there was. Because then DVDs came out. Oh, what? You have to fast forward for it to get the stuff? It just goes where you want? And do you imagine the clarity on this thing? And then my cousin, my cousin Ray, he got whatever he wanted a lot of times. That kid had a TV, I'm not kidding, it was like this big off the ground. 50 inch screen, rear projection, you know what I'm talking about? It had the, this big speaker box on the bottom of it. What? This is like a movie theater in your house. So there's nothing that could put, like, you put a DVD player on top of that guy? Wow. There's no way there could ever be anything better than that. No way. I've seen it with my own eyes. I'll never go back to Grandma's wooden TV. Not after I've seen this. But there's more. And as you know, it continues. And you could tell me there's going to be better than DVD. What could be better than DVD? And then they come out with Blu-ray. And then they have 780p. And then they have 1080p. And now we have high definition. And I finally, believe it or not, just bought my very first TV since 1995, 7? Because people keep giving hand-me-downs, I'm like, whatever, I'll take a hand-me-down TV, I don't need anything fancy. I finally bought a 65-inch 4K Blu-ray Ultra TV. And I, I still don't have digital cable, which then why do you have the TV? My, well, my mom buys us Netflix for Christmas, and that comes in, and it's really awesome. And every once in a while I get some high-def channels for a game, and it's pretty cool. I can still remember, be, I know exactly where I was at, which is hilarious. I was at Denise's Uncle Joe's house for a Christmas party. And he had a high definition TV and a high definition signal. And I know I'd seen high def before, but never close up before. And I remember seeing a Cavs game and I thought I could touch the floor. It was so clear. Like it was just so clear. I was like, whoa. Like this is this is like life changing. Like how could it be so much clearer? This was clear. But this is clearer. How could you have done that? And to that I say. There are lots and lots of us that are still watching TV on this in our lives. Because we are just fine. We live our lives and pretend like we don't need anything else. We don't have time for God. We don't have time for that. And we see our people and we, we hear people that say, oh, God makes my life better. But if you don't see it for yourself, if you don't feel it yourself, if you don't make that choice by yourself, you can sit here and watch this TV 
for the rest of your life and you will still see TV shows and you will still be able to watch the stuff and as far as you know this is as good as it gets and you can die watching this TV and never ever know that you missed out on anything and nothing I do can ever change that but when you take the chance to realize that God has something better for you and you step up to DVD even if that's all the farther you get right now and you just go I'm going to try a DVD player on a little nicer TV you can't go back I have friends, and now that I have the high definition, I understand they don't even want to watch TV at my house when I'm watching regular definition TV because they've seen high definition. They're like, I just can't watch the cabs not clear anymore. I need to know that that little number down there is a six and not an eight or a five or something. It's so much clearer. But I can't get you to change. Tom can't get you to change. Diane can't do it. You have to. You have to want to do that. And, and guys, this isn't a sermon about TVs and telling you about to buy a high definition TV to make you happy. It's a sermon about the fact that if you don't figure it out yourself and you don't try it, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. You can sit here with where you're at right now, and because Satan is so good, he's not red jumpsuit, horns guy with a thing causing all kinds of terror. He's smooth. And he does things like this. Our lives are fine. You live in America. You want to compa play the comparison game? We have homeless people that are living better than most of the people in the world. We are fine. But that's not what you were made for. Jesus came here to give you a life. And a life to the fullest. And he wants you to live it that way. And so the prophet Isaiah, who we started with, we can finish with. Because prophets still speak to us today. You see, we're a people living in darkness. Because we can sit every day of our lives and look right at this screen and think this is the best thing there is. And I'll tell you what, Christianity is to make everything better. Just because I'm showing you a movie on high definition doesn't mean it's going to have a happy ending. But there's a difference when you have a relationship with Jesus, things become clearer and the quality becomes better and you start to understand things a little bit more. And no matter where you're at in your walk, there's another step because I never would believe Blu-ray. What's next? Only you and God can figure that out what's next for you. But you have to put yourself in that place. You have to step in and read some more, pray some more, get in a class, get involved, do something. So that you can figure out where would I be at if I stepped it up a notch. And find that clarity for you because we are a people living in darkness, but that darkness doesn't need to happen anymore. Because a guy that was talking in BC 700 has a message for us in the AD because even though you've been told this by all of your elementary school teachers and middle school teachers, AD doesn't stand for after death, it stands for Anno Domini, which is a Latin phrase which means in the year of our Lord. And you're living in 2017, the year of the Lord, because He has come. He came here and he died for our sins and he rose again. And that same Jesus wants you to have an awesome life because he is the guy that Isaiah predicted would make us have a light and be able to see and live life to its fullest and rejoice and take that burden from you. And so folks, you have to take that next step. Because as cool as this team is to remind my grandma, it ain't fun to watch the game on. And there's so much more out there for you. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you so much that these people braved the weather, the beautiful weather, but the weather. And that we are all here learning about the fact that we learn part of this just group that has just looped and looped and looped from, oh, God, help us, and then we don't need to help God because we're awesome, and then things go wrong, and then we need God again. And here we are in 2017, and we still need you. And we're in the same place where you could send prophets all the time to tell us, God, that that we need you, but we don't know we do because we're just fine. Help us to start realizing we're not fine. God, let our ears be open and our hearts be open to those words, those prophetic words from Isaiah and words that we hear today, God, that we will be better off with you, God. Things aren't going to be perfect with you, God, but you make things clear. You make things higher quality in our lives. And we don't want to find. Help us to find that way to get closer to you. Help us to see the light, God. The light that Isaiah talked about, the light that is your son Jesus. For it's in his free name that we pray. Amen.